So I have quite a few videos about my favorite tools and how to build electrical systems. But in this video, I wanna show you all the new tools that I've bought recently that I use all the time. And it will not be in any particular order. I'm just gonna throw out a bunch of cool stuff and I think you guys will like it. So let's get started. So first we have torque screwdrivers. If you have a torque spec on a terminal, you need to use one of these devices. And these are some budget ones. The Capri is probably my favorite budget one, but if you spend some more money, you can get the Weha. I'm not sure how to say this, but this one is electrically insulated. It costs more, but it comes with these bits that fit really nicely on electrical terminals. But this one is quite different than the others on the market, so let me show you how to use it. First, you pull this out, and then you shove this inside the hole and then you rotate it until the number is at the torque spec that you need and then you stick this back inside and then you use one of the bits that it comes with and then you lock it in place but if you can't afford this one you should still get a cheaper one no matter what but these only work if the threads are clean so you can only torque something if it's a new screw on a terminal or if you've cleaned the threads if it's gunked up corroded or old these are not going to be as accurate next tool is is a torque wrench for gas connections. So if you're doing HVAC like mini splits for off-grid application, this thing is fantastic. But whatever you use it on, make sure it's the right size. I have encountered some gas connections that were larger than this, and that was very unfortunate. So try to find one that's a bit bigger if you can. Next up are fluke meters. Everyone told me about them. I did not believe them. My Klein meter broke, and then I started using this small one, and I was like, wow, this thing is fantastic. So then I bought this one, and this does inrush, and it gives me the same number every single time. So yeah, these are amazing. Now, if you cannot afford a fluke because these are very expensive you can buy a Kuwait this also has inrush measurements and it's mostly accurate I really like this thing for the price I don't think I found a better one but if you can't afford it get a fluke you'll buy it once and you'll be done this thing will last 30 or 40 years or even longer now this is probably overkill but it can save you a lot of time have you ever been working on a project and you have a specific size nut or screw with a very weird thread pitch well you can buy one of these and figure out exactly what size it is you can either call the store up before you get there to make sure they actually have it or you can order a lot of them if you have a lot of battery terminals or something for example so very useful next is a cordless heat gun I had no idea these existed but they actually have them now so if you're working on butt splice connectors and you have marine grade heat shrink and you're on top of a roof or you're far away from an outlet you can easily use this on heat shrink instead very convenient it takes a little longer to heat up than the ones from the outlet because it's a lower power but it does work you just have to give it an extra couple seconds now this is not a new tool but everybody in electrical for low voltage dc should have it it's the temco industries th0020 and this is hands down my favorite crimper for large conductors like 4 aught or 2 aught gauge cables this is what i use and it is so durable everything about this thing is incredible so please it's like 150 bucks but with all the cheap crimpers you're gonna end up buying over the years just buy this next is a heat camera so I use this for all sorts of things you can inspect solar cells you can see where hot water pipes are flowing through your wall you can see how hot a condenser coil is getting and most importantly for electrical systems you can see if there's any bad terminations or any conductors that are getting too hot. So if I have a system and I'm done building it, I'm going to use this camera and look at the whole system. Very useful. It's worth every penny, especially for terminations. Loose electrical connections in my beginner video, I always say that those are the number one cause of problems. And this can inspect those and prevent that problem from ever occurring. So highly recommend. I don't care which one you get. I'm not that big of a fan of Klein anymore. I like some of their tools, but I don't like some of their others. But yeah, this one has worked great. And there's lots of other ones on the market that are cheaper than this. So check them out. Next, with soldering irons, do not buy the cheap ones. I've had boxes of soldering irons when I was a kid, and this is by far the best. It's the Hako FX600. 
This thing is like pure magic and it, it can heat up large joints, it lasts forever, and it's just fantastic. I don't know what kind of magic they have in here, but it's a lot better than the cheaper soldering irons. Also, you need a quad hands or a helping hands. It's just these little clips and it holds all your work in place while you're soldering and it will make your job a lot easier. Also buy some replacement tips that are different shapes. But yeah, once you buy one of these, you'll be set for life. This thing's incredible. Now when it comes to an Allen wrench, when you're building an off-grid system, these are very convenient to use. It has all sorts of sizes and it's really big so you have a lot of leverage. But the terminal typically has a torque spec, so this will not work for that. So invest in some of these and some of these. And then buy a torque wrench and do it properly. And then inspect the termination with a heat camera afterwards and that thing will last for decades. If you do it right the first time, you'll be set for years. Next thing are insulated ratchets. If you work with batteries, you should buy these in every size. You will use them all of the time. And I've never broken one yet. They're very strong. Now this is somewhat new, it's by Klein, and it has all of these little bit drivers, and it has every single size you'll ever need. And you can find this at most hardware stores, it's very common now, and very smart. Next up are insulated screwdrivers for small things, like if you're working inside of an inverter. If there's a deep screw, you can easily access it without causing a dead short. Highly recommend. Now these are step drill bits, but my favorite one for electrical application is the long skinny ones. There are so many times that you have to make a small hole a little bit bigger, and this is just overkill. So get one of these so you can make small incremental steps to make the perfect hole size. Next, compressed gas dusters. I always thought these were goofy and I would never clean out my keyboard because it's nice and clean, but you will find so many other uses for this, like removing dust from inverters, filters, from circuit boards, removing concrete from a hole after you drilled it, just a million different things. So I have this all over my house now. Next, cordless jigsaw, one of the best things ever. You can use this to cut metal, you can use it around the house. I use it to cut off branches, I use it to cut anything. And this thing has seen a lot, so yeah, fantastic tool. Now this is a tool that needs to be improved. I bought this from Costco to clean my solar panels, and it does reach really far, but this doesn't scrub them that well, and the squeegee does not work that well either. And I want it to be wider. We need some type of stick that can clean solar panels. So if you have anything that you want to recommend to replace this, please let me know down below. Next, if you work with concrete, this isn't for everybody, but if you're mounting inverters on a wall, buy this hammer drill. It's almost like magic how fast it drills through concrete. I cannot recommend this thing more. Now most of my other tool recommendations from the past are exactly the same. Like these Klein wire strippers, these manual crimpers for smaller connections, this one's for larger ones, and this one's for really small wires like balance leads, and my favorite cable cutters. Very useful, everyone should have these. And I haven't found anything better. If I do, I'll let you know. Now this was a recent find, and everybody that has flat lock nut wrenches should replace them with these 90 degree ones because these work a lot better in the electrical box and I had no idea that these actually existed. If you're still using these and you're trying to do it at an angle, you're going to have a bad time. This one goes right in there and you can completely spin it around like a lot more than these. And these are very common at any hardware store. This next one my viewers and my friends told me to buy and I never wanted to spend the money. But if you buy cobalt drill bits, you'll never go back to the cheap ones, those titanium whatever, screw those. Just buy the cobalt ones and you'll be amazed at how long these last and how sharp they are and how fast they drill. So yeah, cobalt drill bits by Milwaukee is my favorite. Next is Allen wrenches, but you can connect it to an impact gun. So if you're trying to loosen up a big box and they have a lot of these, this will make your life a lot easier. Now for the last part, I'm gonna show you some lifts that I use to move batteries around my shop. And I think it will be very helpful for some of you if you have a bad back or a bad shoulder. So let's walk around my shop and I'll show you what I've got. Now these are called lift tables and if you're trying to install inverters on a wall or move large batteries a long distance, this is the way to do it. And I have every size they make. I even have some of these outside, but these are the best ones that I use in my shop. And this one right here, which I'll have linked below, is the one that I use all the time. You can see how dirty it is. And it's very easy to use. You just use this to lift it up. And then when you want it to go down, you pull this one. 
Now the table lifts are a little high off the ground and it can be hard to load a battery onto there. So if you want to lift something really low off the ground, this is for you. It's a little archaic, but it works really well. And you can also lock it and then unlock it. And then you can also tilt it with something on or you can just roll it like this. And it's called the Super Handy and it's very handy. You'll find all sorts of uses for this thing. Now the table lifts can hold a lot more weight and they can also lift things very high, especially if you're mounting inverters. You can't do that with this one. Also, this can only lift 330 pounds. The table lifts can do thousands of pounds. The different applications, but if you're moving lots of Power Pro batteries, this is a fantastic way to do it. Those can be moved with a normal hand truck. Let me show you what I use for that. I have these things everywhere and if you're moving just a Power Pro battery, these will work really well. If you're trying to lift that thing up to mount it on the wall, I would not use these. I would use a super handy. But if you're just moving the battery around and you're mounting them on the ground, this is all you need and you can find these anywhere. Also, you can scoop a battery off the ground, put it down like this, and then it's a little bit higher off the ground so you can tilt it up and then move it onto the table lift. And I've done that a hundred times as well. And this helps a ton if your battery's like 300 pounds and you're all alone. I've moved all of the batteries in all of my videos all by myself. And it's because I use these methods, hand truck, super handy, and table lifts. The table lift for mounting is the most crucial though. And once you have these tools, you can mount any size inverter very quickly all by yourself. You won't need anyone's help. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'm looking around and I don't see anything else that I wanna show you. But yeah, these tools are awesome and they will be life-changing. If you build stuff all the time, please check out some of these tools and I think you'll love them. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.